soil. The outer layer of the crust that lies beneath our feet sustains virtually all life found on planet Earth. It works with water, sunlight, and airborne nutrients to produce the miracle of plant life. Soil, water, air, plants, and animals are resources essential to human life. We depend on them and benefit from them. Humans have altered the fragile balance of nature, but we also have the ability to restore it. And this is the goal of the Natural Resources Conservation Service. El Servicio de Conservación de Recursos Naturales, conocido como NRCS, es una agencia federal bajo el Departamento de Agricultura Federal, en el cual trabajamos voluntariamente con agricultores y dueños de terrenos privados para conservar los recursos naturales. Se establece en Puerto Rico en el 1935, al igual que en la Nación Americana, y nuestra misión es Helping People Help the Land, o ayudando a la gente a ayudar a la tierra. In the 1930s, one of the worst natural disasters of the 20th century ravaged much of the United States. Intensive land use aggravated by persistent droughts reduced the soil to dust forcing hundreds of thousands of families to abandon their homes and migrate. In response to the disaster, the government began the Soil Conservation Service, providing strategies farmers could use to combat erosion. As scientists increasingly understood the connection between soil and other natural resources, the scope of the program was broadened to promote conservation and implement good agricultural practices. Conservation districts were created throughout the United States, Puerto Rico and the U.S. Virgin Islands. Known today as the Natural Resources Conservation Service, it uses its expertise to deal with soil, water, air, plants and animals, as well as with human and energy factors. Nosotros ayudamos a los agricultores a que tomen la decisión de mejorar los recursos naturales en su finca. Eh, trabajamos con ellos, le damos las herramientas, trabajamos con gobiernos locales, eh, diseñamos prácticas, eh, hacemos trabajo de ingeniería. Si existe la oportunidad de ayudarlo financieramente, nosotros también como agencia lo podemos hacer. Y nuestros socios pueden complementar, pueden ayudar, podemos eh, trabajar para eh, identificar fondos para poder implementar estas prácticas de conservación. NRCS is a service program. Organization and participation are voluntary. Projects are created through partnerships with other groups and agencies. Some 3,700 active projects aim at conservation and resources improvement are being carried out in Puerto Rico and the U.S. Virgin Islands today.
the Rio Loco Watershed Protection Initiative, also known as the Guanica Bay Coral Reef Initiative, is NRCS's most ambitious conservation project, a model program on both the local and national level. NRCS se destaca mayormente por trabajar en, en la tierra, pero mediante los esfuerzos de NRCS y, y la NOAA, estamos trabajando en un acuerdo para poder eh, ayudar a proteger los arrecifes de corales con las prácticas de, de conservación que nosotros implementamos dentro eh, de la cuenca. The Rio Loco watershed in southwestern Puerto Rico is located within the towns of Adjuntas, Maricao, Yauco, Guanica, and Lajas. The mountainous region is also known for coffee cultivation, and its beans were highly prized throughout Europe in the 19th century. In the 20th century, production declined, but in recent years, local coffee has been making a comeback as a gourmet specialty crop. However, practices involved in cultivating sun-grown coffee varieties have eliminated shade trees, leaving only the coffee shrubs and bare soil. A loss of habitat for wildlife species as well as accelerated erosion and sedimentation have impacted not only the mountains, but also the coast. Several miles off the coast of Guanica, the continental shelf drops thousands of feet to the ocean floor. But in the shallow waters closer to the shore exist diverse underwater ecosystems, the most spectacular being those of the coral reefs. Historically, some of the most pristine reef communities in Puerto Rico are found in this area. Though seemingly worlds apart, the sediments and fertilizers used in the upper mountains as well as in the Lajas Valley agricultural fields travel as floodwaters and are transported downriver until they are deposited in the Guanica Bay. This runoff negatively affects the existing ecosystems, particularly the coral reefs. To help protect the reefs, NRCS and its partners have proposed conservation practices on several farms in the lower area of the watershed, where the conversion from sugarcane to vegetable production has brought with it changes in the management of water and soil resources. This project includes, among other strategies, the construction of seven artificial ponds, three to trap floodwater sedimentation, and four to collect water for irrigation. By protecting drainage, restoring and safeguarding the riverbanks of the Rio Loco and improving the existing irrigation systems, this project will bring about a more efficient use of local water resources. All of these practices promote sustainable agriculture and have been designed by NRCS through agreements with the Southwest District of Soil and Water Conservation. Es bien importante para nosotros los agricultores mantener y conservar el suelo, ya que nosotros todos los frutos salen de la tierra, entonces nosotros la dañamos o hacemos malas prácticas, vamos a tener una pérdida en el futuro. Through the Rio Loco Initiative, NRCS and its conservation partners have united efforts with the goal of reducing contaminants by using effective conservation techniques on the farmland. 
Fish and Wild específicamente está trabajando con el NRCS en la parte de arriba del watershed, en la montaña. Estamos trabajando con agricultores, cambiando las prácticas de cómo se siembra el café. Estamos llevando el café bajo sombra. Nuestro propósito es restaurar el hábitat para especies nativas, especies protegidas por la ley federal, protegidas por la ley estatal, y a su vez proveerle al, al agricultor un mejor café. More than 30 private farms have become part of this program. Thousands of planted trees will help control soil erosion and improve the quality of the fresh water that eventually enters the sea. This will also provide food and shelter for birds, among them the almost extinct Amazona vitata. Now the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service has proposed establishing a new parrot wildlife refuge in Marigao Forest. With the goal of creating an optimal habitat for the birds, NRCS has also partnered with farmers and private landowners through its incentive program to acquire land, restore forests, and increase the biodiversity of the region. Bordering the coastline of the Caribbean Sea is the southern town of Santa Isabel. It lies on a large plain set atop the island's largest aquifer. That and the richness of its soil have made Santa Isabel an ideal place for growing fruits and vegetables and producing seeds. Los terrenos son bien fértiles, bien profundos, tienen muy buen declive, aptos totalmente para el cultivo de hortalizas. Quizás Santa Isabel, la capital de las hortalizas en todo Puerto Rico, por las condiciones que tiene de, de terreno bueno, mecanizable y con buena agua de, de pozos profundos. Increasing extraction from the aquifer in order to develop the region has triggered a reduction of both the quantity and the quality of the water caused by salt water infiltration. NRCS and its partners have helped these farmers in constructing and financing state-of-the-art methods of water and sediment retention that would have been too expensive for the average farmer to afford. José Luis. Eh, el lago está, se está llenando. Sí, está cogiendo punto 70. As a result, farmers are maximizing the use of water and recharging the aquifer for present and future generations. Este proyecto específico tiene siete lagos de riego. Eh, aproximadamente cada lago de riego cubre como unas 300 a 350 cuerdas de sembradillo y en total el, lo que se diseñó para este proyecto pues, puede proveerle riego eficientemente a unas 2.500 cuerdas. In addition, NRCS engineers designed several spiral-shaped sedimentation basins that slow down the speed of runoff and help trap sediments that are carried away. Such methods have proved efficient during periods of heavy rain by helping to control the periodic flooding that can destroy crops. What's more, the control of runoff and sediments have benefited nearby communities that for decades have suffered from the impact of flooding and mud deposits. Los técnicos de NRCS eh, con este proyecto yo creo que dieron eh, un ejemplo, no solamente en Puerto Rico, yo creo que esto fue a nivel nacional hasta de los Estados Unidos, porque vinieron de Washington a ver este proyecto. Eh, quedaron sumamente entusiasmados 
Y gracias a esa, a esa interacción entre el Departamento de Agricultura Estatal, la Autoridad de Tierra en Arcíes y el Distrito Caribe, pues mire, esto es un, un proyecto que ha incitado a que más gente quiera que se hagan en los terrenos que poseen. The project is a showcase of good practices for the conservation of water resources, management of nutrients, improvement in air quality, and erosion control on land of high agricultural value. The efficiency of the irrigation systems also helps farmers save energy. Managing energy for the dairy industry is another NRCS goal. In the region between Atillo and Arecibo, NRCS experts have partnered with the Department of Agriculture in one of its most innovative programs, conducting energy audits for a hundred participating farms. Local technicians have been trained to audit the daily operations of a dairy farm that by its nature requires high energy consumption equipment. Se toma este tanto las cargas de energía que tienen los equipos, el consumo de diésel, el manejo de la finca, el manejo de desperdicio, pues en las vaquerías trabajamos con con seres vivos y tenemos que ir manejando el consumo de, de energía según las necesidades también de los animales, porque no queremos afectar la operación. Muchas veces se trabaja con, con los horarios de ordeño para entonces establecer un, un manejo correcto de, de gasto energético que tiene la vaquería. By analyzing how energy is being used, experts can make suggestions that will help farmers save money. Con esta instalación logramos economizar 300 dólares de luz mensuales. NRCS provides orientation in the planning and development of conservation methods that provide such environmental and economic benefits as growing improved strains of grass that increase the production of high quality fodder and reduce the costs of feed. Designing enclosures that will remain in good condition and reduce the cost of manual labor in maintaining them. Evaluating the use of basins for storing and providing water to livestock in selected pastures. Analyzing methods for collecting, storing and recycling organic wastes that would promote their effective use as fertilizers, thus reducing the cost of commercial fertilizers. pues lo aprovechamos como fertilizante orgánico y a la misma vez pues evitamos de que cause algún impacto a los acuíferos y a, y a los cuerpos de agua que pueda haber en esta área. Through field visits, NRCS specialists promote programs and services for all potential clients, focusing on private landowners. Nosotros primero dialogamos con el agricultor para ver cuál es su preocupación principal. Le pedimos a ellos que nos enseñen cuáles son esas áreas que, que sean más críticas o que necesiten ese enfoque. Y después evaluamos qué aplicación le podemos dar a ellos en la finca. As its name suggests, the Natural Resources Conservation Service offers services, not regulations, and participation in its programs is voluntary. In its desire to conserve natural resources, NRCS entered into a partnership to acquire Las Salinas de Cabo Rojo, a site unique in the Americas. Located on Puerto Rico's southwesternmost peninsula, these salt flats are recognized as among the oldest in the hemisphere.
still in commercial use, they form part of a mosaic of ecosystems that provide habitat for more than 40,000 birds migrating between North and South America. Pues este lugar tiene varias designaciones. Eh, forma parte eh, de lo que el Departamento de Recursos Naturales a finales de los 70 eh, clasificó como lugares importantes para la vida silvestre. Más tarde también se convierte o forma parte del hábitat crítico designado para la protección de la mariquita de Puerto Rico, un ave endémica única de Puerto Rico y que está en peligro de extinción. Y recientemente, ah, en febrero del 2010, se convierte en el único lugar en el Caribe designado como una red para aves limícolas, para aves playeras, dentro de un programa grande que se llama Western Hemisphere Shorebird Reserve Network. Mangroves, wetlands and dry coastal forests make up much of this natural environment. Several species of sea turtles nest along the beaches and manatees find food in the seagrass offshore. Recognizing the importance of the region, in 1999, NRCS joined with the Trust for Public Land and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service to establish the Cabo Rojo Salt Flats Wetland Reserve Program. Over 1,200 acres of private tracts of wetland were bought and added to the adjoining National Wildlife Refuge already in existence. Fish and Wildlife now manages the land and provides technical assistance with the goal of improving the habitat for the migrant birds that use it. This partnership ensures that the salt flats will remain for the enjoyment of residents and visitors alike, as a natural laboratory for scientists and an exceptional place for wildlife. Covering some 85 square miles, the topography of the island of St. Croix includes a mountainous region and a plain that was farmed for sugarcane in centuries past. In all the U.S. Virgin Islands, farmers face the challenge of being competitive in food production while farming on a small but very diverse scale. Small individual plots cultivated and harvested manually predominate in the region. Most of our farmers operate on public lands, land that, that we lease to farmers. And with respect to those lands and even private lands, when we approach NRCS, they always uh, respond favorably. And so many of our initiatives have to do with um, rectifying ponds, like I said, structurally. And one of the other initiatives that we engage in oftentimes with, with uh, NRCS, land maintenance. I'm talking about pasture issues, etc. Most of our producers are into small livestock operations, meaning sheep goat and pigs for the most part. We have very few producers today who are into very large cattle operations. On the Annaly Ranch, one of the largest and oldest in the region, agricultural practices and resources conservation efforts are directed toward the management of pastures. Well, right now we're working with the NRCS with our grassland program, uh, which helps us to stay protective of our land. Here we have a lot of good pangola grass that was planted back in 1966, but we still need to maintain uh, control of the cassia and the tantan, and that's what this program helps us to do. So we have nice, beautiful pastures and protected land and productive land that can, we can help people our community providing food. And that's a big incentive. We're trying to produce food. Approximately 200 registered, licensed farmers operate in the region. Some 10% of the population maintains crops of some sort, principally for local consumption.
Sejia Farms is located in what is known as the agricultural belt of the island. With respect to crops, we have many who are into fruit production, many who are into vegetable production as well, and we have many who produce herbs for culinary and medicinal purposes. That's mostly on the island of St. Thomas. And with respect to any given farm though, we will find that any given farmer is usually a diversified operation because their land holdings are very small and their aim is to get as much return for their investment as possible. So therefore diversified operations are typical for all of our producers. Our producers as well rely on the EQIP program with NRCS to get much of their work done. When it comes to pasture management again, fencing issues, well drilling, etc., those are initiatives that we really rely on here in the territory and appreciate our collaboration with NRCS for. We work closely with the NRCS office here. We are on the program that is called EQIP. And through that program, we were able to get a well dug. We are uh, our water system throughout the farm. We also have uh, Mr. Rudy O'Reilly who comes in on a regular basis and follow up with us of how the things are going on the farm and how the program that we're working with them are working for us. NRCS works with local farmers in developing methods for cultivation and in designing infrastructure projects that help to reduce erosion and avoid contaminating bodies of water. For more than 75 years, the Natural Resources Conservation Service of the Caribbean area has promoted agricultural development in harmony with conservation. Working hand in hand with federal and local agencies, non-governmental organizations, volunteer groups, private landowners and farmers, NRCS has developed good conservation practices with the goal of restoring, recovering, and maintaining our natural resource legacy. By helping people help the land, NRCS has shown that at the same time, the land reciprocates by sustaining human life. NRCS we can call them at any time and they will come out and work with us. Orientan a aquel agricultor que va a empezar, que va a comenzar, que no conoce. No solo te orienta, sino que tiene un personal cualificado en las distintas áreas que nos brinda el servicio. Son manos amigas que te esperan. Nuestra misión es. Helping people help the land, ayudando a la gente a ayudar la tierra.